Hey, Timmy, how are we going? It is Kaz from In The Trenches with Kaz, and we are here today. Well, probably a video we should have done a long time ago, and it's a step-by-step -step solution for anyone that might be considering joining the Army that's made the mistake of going to the Australian Reddit sign, site. And if this is your first time here and you're not subscribed, you're an idiot because this is where you come to to meet the coach, that for a price of a coffee a month, you can join Patreon, which we're about to talk about in a minute, and have a one-on-one -on -one coach to get you to your dream career in 2024, because this year we're done, all right? Mm. We've got Carl P there. We've got Foxy Fox there. It's going to be great to have you here tonight. We've actually got a step-by-step -step process. So if this is the first time you've ever been to the channel, it might be all you need. Welcome. And to all of our fantastic people of the channel, they'll let you know this is a no-nonsense channel. Conservative thinking people, the best of the bunch, those that have either already served, are serving, but also tolerate everyone. And this is indicative of the sort of community you're going to find when you join the military. A bit of dark humour to get through the hard times when there's no power, when there's no mobile phones, when there's no interaction other than one-on-one. -on -one. Keep the noise down, dickhead, with the person beside you in a threat environment, sometimes very lonely, sometimes. But usually you've always got someone with you because even a sniper needs a battle buddy. We're going to get to the comments and then we're going to start working our way through the list. But before we do, there's two platoons in the School of Inventory right now who step out tomorrow morning on their defensive week, which actually goes for 10 days, which makes it longer than a week, without a minute off other than when you're sitting on a fly-blown shit house. And that's what's waiting for you too, and we'll talk about that. So to those guys, I raise a glass of coffee, cup, and uh, I wish you well. You've got 100 points in advance. If you're just here for a chat, that's fine too. Because guess what? If you're not in the military, you're supporting the military. And if you're supporting the military, we're supporting you. Like, ah, that works. The perfect fit, rural hunter. Boom. There's someone, you know, that I can't tell you who he is. He's not a dentist. But we've got some really weird rules in Australia when it comes to uh, military personnel not being allowed to show their face. And I think we're one of the only countries it does while our bosses feel like they can jump on there and say whatever gump they want. G'day, Rural Hunter. How you going, mate? Koopy's there. Sahara Sand with the voice that is so welcoming. You've got to hear it to believe it. Action Jack, as they would say in New Zealand, or Action Jack in Australia. We've got Josh, Josh Allen, two first names. Always makes it hard when you're calling the roll. Hey, has been watching video for a few months. Now just passed selection. A combat specialist off to Waiuru, that which is New Zealand team. Our Anzac brothers in February. Cheers for all your advice from New Zealand. Mutsu Kao, New Zealand. Second first battalion was where I've served twice, once on exchange with Bravo Company, second fourth battalion. And next time I went over there on uh, not Op Mazurka, what's the other one? Went over there, nearly got flogged, you know, but. Wait for two seconds. I'll show you an artifact because I know Carl P loves artifacts. Wait two seconds. Um, where are we? Uh, where is the gentleman? Josh Allen. Wait two seconds. You're going to know what this is. And you're right. I've got the haircut that could stop traffic at the moment. So where are we? G'day, Big Mike. How are you going? Crayons. Sounds like Marines. Stop it. Behave yourself. Josh Allen. Remember, every person from Special Forces normally starts in infantry. Boom. There's a tie from the 2nd 1st Battalion. Kuda Takihipuni, which means we are ready. Now, that's what I've worn every Anzac Day, which is my birthday, Anzac. Birthday, Anzac Day, bam. Mucho respeto to our brothers that make Anzac. And I had his crowns, was hopeful to uh, train with the Marines and learn which flavours are best. 
Yeah, it's all right. G'day, Dougie. How are you going? Uh, could I catch? Uh, Glad to catch you live, and you can catch me tomorrow too. Carl P, great to uh, have you here. And you're right, the Ellen Degenerate hairstyle, it's right here. So let's get to number one. What's the first thing, first bit of advice I can give you? First bit of advice would be to join Patreon. Why would you do that? Again, if this is your first time here, G'day, Jack, how are you going, mate? If this is your first time here, why would you go and want to go back and forth texting on comments when you can actually call me directly on the bat phone and have a good conversation, some dark humour, a good laugh, and let me tailor everything towards your goal. Now, the saying I have, the motto, if you will, is the army is there for the army's needs. I am there for your needs. There we go. Rule hunter. Mm. Okay. So, Patreon, if you don't do it, I can't drag you to the waterhole to drink. If you don't do it, it's a felony and vanilla rice will be there to kick your ass later. Okay, let's have a look at the very first one. We need to research the roles. You know, we need to research the roles and we're going to use who was an example today, not Stevie Webb, Oscar Manning. Um, thanks, Oscar. Thanks for the plug in there. Uh, we're going to use Oscar Manning today. So let's treat it like he wants to join the military. Or someone put a thumbs up, you know, and let me know who wants to be. Thank you for Simon. That's the uh, the Patreon link there. Put a thumbs up if you want to be our recipient today. So we use you as a proxy for someone who wants to join the military. Like you're sitting right beside me, and I'm going to help you out with this lesbian hairstyle. No longer the lesbian ghoul. This is just Ellen's generous. Put your thumb up if you need it. Go catch the sort I'd pop in, Aussie legend. Great to have you here. You know, we need a lot of Aussie legends. Okay, so Ash was the first man. Well, Stick were who was first because, you know, who dares wins? He jumped in. So Ash decides he's going to join the army. No worries. Let's get rid of that one for a sec. So the first thing he's going to look for is something similar to, I'll get rid of this to get out of your way. And he, he first looks at, okay, the army. Okay, so what are we what are we doing there? So we come over to this site, bam, now about about us, our work community, all that sort of shit. Join the army, all right? Let's jump out of that one and let's go in a little bit to share this tab instead. And we've got browse jobs. All right, this is what we do. So you're going to think to yourself, Kaz, why do I have to come up with three jobs? You know, if all I want to do is join the army. All right. The reason is when you look down here and Ash is looking, if it doesn't have priority role beside it, then you may not get a gig. You might get put in the bottom of the pile unless you say one of the names on that priority. Let's just say he wants to join infantry because that's God's core and it's also indicative, you know, uh, it's the only core that can hold ground. Its motto is duty first. Its role is to seek out and close the enemy, to kill or capture him, to seize and hold ground or repel attack by day or night, regardless of season, weather or terrain. It's such an obvious one to go to. They won't even put it at the top of the list because they know that people already know that it exists and that's where they're going. You know, what? So they've got army logistics there. They've got chef, warehouse store people. These are three jobs that are pretty hard to fill. So they've got them at the top. But then we come down to human resource man, uh, administrator. You know, if you're the human resource administrator, um, you can fuck off because you're doing a really, really bad job of recruiting at the moment. I'd put it failing to the point of um, basically counterproductive to capability of the Australian Army and security of Australia. And I can talk about that another time, but I wouldn't have to do this video if they were doing their job. Air defence operator, well, they're part of artillery. Airborne electronic analyst. That sounds like some words that are thrown into something that probably means something completely different. All you hear is airborne analyst. Uh, operate sophisticated electronic surveillance equipment. Is he going to be in the air when he does it? I don't know. So we come down, artillery system operator, army officer. We've got enough of those already. Artillery operator, 
and we keep coming down, we keep coming down, and we might even have to go to the second page. Uh, infantry soldier, there it is. Okay, infantry soldier over here on the right, security operations. So let's just say you want to do uh, infantry operator. If it doesn't have that yellow priority role on it, and you try to go in there and, and say that that's where you want to go, then I can tell you something that's going to happen. And that is that they're going to listen to the other things you say and you may not get it. What just happened then? Wait a sec. Uh, there we are. Um, they might actually say, I can't see your comments at the moment, team, because uh, I've got the screens full. If you put down, for example, infantry, soldier, artillery, and and cavalry or engineers or intelligence, and artillery is hard to fill because they've got a list in front of them, and you say that, they're only going to hear artillery. They're going to fill army's needs. So research your role. Go in there with three. Go to this ADF site if you're not on Patreon with me. If you're with me, I'll look on it while we're talking. And we'll see what your roles are. But what I can tell you is if you say infantry and artillery, you can already hear the scratch or the sound of the tactile keys as he's putting your name down for artillery for the rest of your career, trying to lock you in for 40 years with a $780 bonus. Mm. So know the roles. The other thing is you might actually be passionate about joining intelligence, passionate about joining artillery, and passionate about joining infantry. And there only might be one job available. So instead of them saying, go away, we've got nothing for you, what happens is they go, yeah, well, we've got, well, let's explore that. You've given me something to work with. And it also looks like you've done your research. One bit of warning. If you say you're going to infantry, remember the person that talks to you if they're not going to infantry, you need to be able to uh, be able to question uh, or at least pass the attitude test with them if they've got an anti-infantry sentiment, if they come from Navy, if they come from Air Force, if they feel threatened by your toxic masculinity, you know, and um, uh, the fact that you've got a coffee with no soy in it might be fucking terrifying for some. And, and this would be the stage if you're a female, don't go to infantry, please. Don't do it. You know, I'm a father of a daughter. I wouldn't tell you if I didn't think you're putting yourself in harm's way by doing so. Your engine capacity, there might be an outlier out there somewhere in the world, but I haven't seen one that yet that passes legitimately without people looking the other way while you're doing things for you to get in, and your engine will just work way too hard for the workload that's required. And men, there's a lot of men that can't make it either, so it's not just about the girls. But well, let's go on to the next one, shall we? Research the roles. They're going to ask you about them. Okay. We've always said three choices. And you need to know why you want to go there. So if you want a specific choice and you want to go, again, I'll harp on this for a second, infantry. And they go, well, so why infantry? So that leads you back to why do you want to join? Most people never ask in their career how much do you get paid? Because the military is a calling. You know, when people actually go to the military, quite often what happens is they end up going in there maybe against the advice of some of their friends because this is something they're actually passionate about. And if you say, why do you want to go to infantry? It could simply be because of the three, the Holy Trinity, mateship. I need it in my life. The other one is the adventure. Okay. I want to be in a world of adventure 24 7. Now, I don't want to have to pay for these things. I want to get paid to go and have my legs hanging out of a helo flying over another country, whether it's in Kaneohe Bay, USA, Hawaii. Yep, done that a bunch of times working with the Marines. Okay. Or whether it's living in a, in a goddamn fort a Portuguese fort over 400 years old in somewhere like bloody um, East Timor or in the cradle of civilization over in the Middle East to be part of an adventure. And the last one might be 
because I want to be the best athlete I possibly can while opening up a door to special forces. And infantry is what opens that door. There's three choices right there. And mateship, that's all you need to hear. At no stage do you say you want to go and fight or want to go and hurt someone or want to join because I love guns. You haven't said any of that. So that's a good reason. Let's go to the next one. Hurdles. I'm have a quick look what you've got to say first. Oh, yeah. So we've got a few people here. Let's see what questions. Because at the end of the day, that's what's really important. Now, join Patreon right now if you can, team. Uh, Sam Conroy, good day, Kaz. It's been a while since I've been on the streams. You gave me some great motivation and chatted about photography. Looking to join the Navy around 2025. What do you reckon? I love the Navy. I love the ocean. Absolutely love it. I've been on a bunch of naval uh, ships all across the world. Yeah, and I'm going on a cruise in March. So there you go. I reckon go for it. I'd say go sooner. G'day, Terry G. Group Barracks. There's a lot of fem There is females in engineers. Yep. Long Prong. Now, there's a name. 343. Three. I've got a Long Prong when the lights are out too. Foxy. Look up current military operations uh, to what humanitarian work is going on. Yep. Uh, that's a question I'll ask. Yep. What is happening in the region? They actually ask you too much. You go, that's why I came here. I want to find out. Simon Powell, ex Raffi, right there. If there's a such thing as ex Raffi, you know, ex Army, maybe his, his entire life. There you go. Uh, what else we got? Dave D. How you going there, legend? Carl P. Uh, stay in school. Yep. Get those results in. Work on your fitness and let your body, okay, turn into the best version of you, the scaffolding. Oz off. Uh, Oz, Ozu, Oz. <laughs> I'm waiting. Uh, I'm wanting to in as a as an infantry officer, Kaz. Just heads up before our chat next week. That's awesome, mate. He's going to be on the bat phone talking. I mean, we've got a hundred percent on our OSB, which is an officer selection board, of which I used to be an instructor for infantry officers. Hadley, I like that name. A Ford observer is held to the same standard as the infantry. Ford observers are a hybrid, mate. They live between artillery and infantry. Sometimes they get used wrong. Sometimes they get used correctly. Their job is not to be in the fight, but they will get dragged into it. Okay, their job is to move with infantry, with cavalry, with armoured corps, and to be able to have eyes on the target, to make an assessment on the uh, red, which is a risk estimate distance, okay, before they call in ordnance, which can be anything from me trying to rock, which would be deadly, okay, or... Uh, Aviation assets that come from RAF, from Navy, from Army, etc. They've got a fantastic job. Don't go to Darwin, but. Mm. Jadak, great news. I weighed in today. I'm down to 88 kilos. And I got my six kilometer ride down to 15 minutes. I don't want you to ride. I want you to run. Words that thing on joining, but I uh, got a, uh, a decent criminal record. That's going to hurt, mate, but I'm sure you've got a great story. Jaddock, uh, I want to get down to 10. I love – were you talking about a run before or six kilometer ride? I don't know. Right. Hey, Dave Penson from Vietnam. Great to have you here, mate. For everyone that doesn't know, Dave is retired uh, military, and uh, he is a great dude and part of our channel, and we love him very much. Uh What's this one? Um, bam. Oh, what have I done? Oh, there we go. Uh, there we go. See, my logistics aren't the best here either, team. So hurdles. That's our one we're going to talk about now. What's in your way? We just heard, you know, people have got a criminal record. That's going to get in your way. Tattoos on your hand is going to get in your way. Education is uh, not having a pass in English and maths at year 10 level is going to get in your way. That doesn't have anything to do, no correlation with your IQ team, none. That's got to do with your ability to concentrate to someone that may not be a very bloody good teacher. Teaching a subject you don't give two shits about or you're being distracted by some legend who's telling you you should join the military, but I'm also telling you stick through. Even if you hate school, don't care. Look at the girl in the front row. See what you can do to kick that goal. Get a conversion by year 12. If you're going to leave at year 10, speak to your mum and dad. Get their blessings. 
But remember, there's no rush. You've got time on your side. Time in the market. Mm. Mm. Okay. Hurdles. Injuries. What medical injuries do you have? Do you have anything that's down on the paperwork? Here's one you don't want to, that we don't want to talk about, but we have to. What if you're a dickhead and you made some stupid life decisions and you and you like the illicit substances? One of the hurdles might be you've got it in your system. You want that out of your system. You want to give that shit up for life, you know. But make sure it's out of your system before you go and do a urine test, blood test, you know, that the army sends you away for. That's a hurdle. It could be that you're in a relationship you need to break up from. It might be you're at school. It could be that you're in a job you can't get away from that's got a return of service obligation. It could be anything medical, you know, administration or, or relationship that's in the way. Get that resolved. Don't go to recruiting with a bunch of problems that are going to prevent you from being the best version of you. Hurdles. Fuck them off. The reason why I swear occasionally is because, one, I'm a goddamn man, and, two, this is the way adults can speak. I want you to be able to take it seriously. They're not giving you a glossed-over version of how to communicate. Because you're going to hear a lot of swearing when you get in the army, especially from someone like me who's trying to help you on the ground, whether it be at the School of Infantry, whether it be in the battalion, whether it be in a platoon, whether it be in an operations as you're about to get out of a helo in a foreign village where they don't like us and the only thing you know in their language is not so fucking cow, which means white warrior. I'm one of them. Soldier. I've lost every boxing match, which makes me pretty shit warrior. Hmm. Okay, what else we got? Let's have a look and then we'll go back to your comments. Admin outstanding, outstanding commitments. Can you go now? So they're going to ask you at this goddamn dropped piece of dysentery shit after eating a kilo of curry prunes and Indian food that they've thrown into a fan, yeah, into a neutral bullet, which they call the recruiting process. It used to all happen in one day. Now you've got a psych assessment that happens separately online, which is impossible. Even Jordan Peterson will tell you that. Then you've got an assessment over here that's going to ask you what you want to join, when and why. And then you've got a medical that's over there. And then you've got a PFA, which even gives you a practice, which I should never give you. And then you've got another one over here where you do some online, hey, can I join? And all at the same time, they don't get back to you. So come here, join Patreon, let me be on the journey with you and let me explain to you the hardest time to join is right now because people are getting posted out, people are getting promoted, people are getting ready to get sent in. And normally people, when they go to recruiting, aren't there because they've got a passion for you to get in the military it's because they're trying to get out of instructional service. Yep. Mm. While still drinking coffee and being in a city, which is counterproductive to being a soldier, it's the opposite. Even in Rome, soldiers weren't allowed in Rome unless you're the Praetorian Guard. Anyway, so get your admin out of the way. Don't take a problem with the recruiting process. The next one's going to be, bam, fitness. While that's happening, I'm going to go back over here and answer any of your comments because you might have some. How are we liking this so far, team? Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Okay. Um, if you see a beautiful woman and you've got the bat phone number, make sure you go and write it on the back of her door. Uh, I want to serve. Well, Jack, uh, Jadik, that's good to know. Sahara Sand. Hey, young Simon. He's not old. He's hit the half century. Don't give him any props. Permax, you sound like medicine. Hey, met one of your mates at an ADF Expo on Saturday. Uh, his last name started with Pack. I forgot the rest of it. He sounds fat. But we were sitting in the back of a bushmaster trying to call you. He tried to call me, mate, but that, you know, that guy, mate, you know he's not actually in the military. He's just got a uniform that he got in the Wonder Woman show bag and he pretends to be one of his. <laughs> G'day, mate. How you going? Rigbone. I must have gotten really lucky because my ADF assessment session lasted a whole 10 minutes. They must have been happy with you and the way you turned up. You probably had a Roger Ranjep jaw. No dramas whatsoever. Looked fit. Looked the part. Had no dramas. No worries. Get in. Remember, we're in priority at the moment. Foxy Fox, Hadley. Uh, TAFE can get you a full qualification in year uh, 10 English and maths. That's correct. 
prepare to win and you'll be fine. That's right. Do the work before you go in there and you're going to be good to go because no one likes extra paperwork. Uh, White Whale, I knew her. Any tips on getting a VC? Uh, well, most people actually die uh, trying to get a Victoria Cross. You don't want one of those, mate. And when you do get one, they're going to want you to be a politician. So don't do it. Rule Hunter, be able to do a BFA before you join. Excellent. Talking about fitness right there. If you're going to go and be a, um, uh, if you're going to turn up to the military and if you want to go to infantry, really it should be anyone, look up what the scores are for a basic fitness assessment, not a pre-fitness, uh, pre-enlistment fitness assessment and meet those scores because the army is going to let you slide in like some lefty, you know, do the bare minimum to be able to get in there and get your soy and put it into a goddamn coffee cup that probably burns your hand. They call it large and charge, and charge you eight bucks at Starbucks. Now, but in actual fact, real men drink coffee from their hand, straight from the kettle. <laughs> um, go in there, be able to get past those fitness assessments. Because guess who really sets the standard for fitness? Do you know who it is? Palestine. Middle East, okay, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, East Timor, Vietnam, Korea, Germany, Europe, battlefields, winter, summer. You never hear people complain about spring. Yeah. But the, the weather and the battlefield decides what the fitness standard is and whether you are lacking. And sometimes there is nothing you can do to be ready. Seven years in 812, discharged 2019, currently enlisting in reserves. I didn't learn my lesson. Mate, what better recruiting tool can you have than this young man, Arcana, Ar Arcanius, that is showing after doing seven years, he wants to go back and get in it. That's proof this is not propaganda. Thank you very much, mate. And I hope you get in. Well done. And um, wish you well. And if, even if you were a serving member that's got out and you just need someone to talk to about your military experiences to compare them, then bam, jump on Patreon. Mr. Bryce is here, ex-6th uh, Battalion. Mr. Bryce is a very, very sick boy at the moment, very, very sick. And this is him right here who is about to get painted. We've already painted most of your bloody buddies. And... I just wanted to put a video together for you individually, mate. So that's coming to you. Bryce, he, um, he's given me permission to talk about his situation. You know, he has got incurable Parkinson's disease, you know, which means he can't hold non-elect debts anymore. You wouldn't trust him near a Claymore, you know, um, or a match near a Fuse. But we love him. He's suffering. His attitude is fantastic. So can we get some thumbs up there for uh, uh, Mr. Bryce? And he's got a team manic down below, beneath him. G'day, mate. I'll be doing my session after walking the Kokoda Trail. Fantastic. Um, any tips? Yeah? Okay, drink your water and do your cardio because Kokoda is a goddamn hard event. Outside that, if you mean about the military, it's what I'm doing right now. I'll see you there, Jacko. So fitness. The best thing you can do for fitness, and it'll cost you money, right, is go and be part of a boot camp at your local gym. The reason why I say that, it's the best thing you can do. You'd invest in body armor if it wasn't being supplied. Well, this is your body armor. You know, you're going to be doing uh, the best, what do you call it, PT sessions in a boot camp that almost represent the same PT that you'll do in the military, 40-minute sessions where you're going to get results that are not by your ability to push you but by an instructor's ability to push you that's also set up a session and then has people you don't know to compete against. You're bringing out the best of the best of you and misses you. You know, your surname might be there as well. So there's a social aspect. Everything about it is make sure you let them know you want to join the military. Don't accept my bitch-ass excuses. Make me work but don't injure me. And where the areas I really need to work on is cardio, push-ups, okay, dips, burpees, right, as well as uh, abdominal strength because that will look after your back as well. 
but cardio is a real big one. Mm. Fitness. Go in there ready because you'll be crying if you don't. And don't think because you're going to non-arms cord, that means you can take your foot off the pedal because we expect you to be able to carry us out as well. Foxy Fox, get out of your local Sunday five-kilometer park. Excellent. Uh, there's always the, the park runs. Absolutely. It's uh, free and being uh, among the crowd. Uh, brings out the best. And as soon as you've done it, then you have a personal best, and then you keep going. So white whale, that sounds racist. Moby's dick. Is that a good idea? Which one, uh, white whale? Uh, we've got, yeah, the skirt. You know, one of our spanners. Or yeet the skirt. Uh, the best advice. Well done, team. Uh, just notice Ash is in the chat. Ash is who we're talking about. If he was joining the military, this is all about him. When you get in there, they're going to ask you, okay, fitness, how are you? You know, and you should be able to say, I can do the 2.4 in this amount of time. I can do this many push-ups. I can do this many chin-ups. I can do dips. I can do this many things. Or you can just say, I can already exceed the requirement of 11 minutes uh, 18 for a 2.4 kilometer run of the infantry BFA. As soon as you say that, they're going to take, oh, okay, awesome. We don't have to go down that avenue now. You've just dealt with the elephant in the room, which isn't you, clearly. Mr. Bryce, I'm doing okay. Thanks, Simon and guys. Getting nice sponge baths by a nice female nurses. Oh, yeah. I didn't get any of those. I had to wash my own balls. Vortex Eliminations. I was accepted to join at 44 years. Holy shit. What was your role? The journey of inner reflection and self-reinvention during the recruitment stage was a game changer. Sad I found out my heart's not up to it. Uh, not up to it. No regrets. We move on. 44 years old. you got to be an outlier to have a crack at that. All right? And that is a midlife crisis expectation that people go, hey, I want to get back on the field. I get it. You had a go? Well done. Big Mike, park run also forces you to wake up uh, early. And we all know the best people get up early, all those with mental health. Oscar Manning, good one. Uh, a lot to do is start at uh, 40 burpees, run 100 metres, then 39 burpees. That's a lot of burpees, a long way to go. Make sure you do it on the grass because you'll get, a, you'll get a, a bloody head rush. Permax is uh, the, the two people I was telling you about that I met on Saturday and the DFR task. Well, it's great to have you all here, and we're all part of a brotherhood, and you never know when we're going to need each other. So here's a um, almost empty uh, cup of coffee for you. We've already hit nearly 33 minutes, and this feels like it's great. We should have done this earlier. Someone told me that on your first day at the town is to try and beat up the type of soldier to send a message. Is that a good idea? That would be a silly idea. You will get fucking flogged <laughs> um, by everyone. When you get to the battalion, the very best thing you can do, here's a yarn for you, is let the platoon know because you'll get allocated to a platoon before you do your acclimatization, uh, acclimatization training. But when you get introduced to your platoon, you walk in there and you go, who am I meant to give the carton to? And they're going to go, what do you mean? Yeah, who am I supposed to give the carton a beer to to say as a welcome and a sign of tribute that I appreciate you guys having me? They're already going to go, oh, the new guy is a legend. Come on in, mate. All you need to do is shut the hell up. You know, listen, learn, and decide where you are in the pecking order. It's almost exactly the same as your first day in jail. Shut up, open your ears, and hope you have a task on very, very soon so you get to actually prove yourself in a field environment and finish everything you start. Everything. Well, let's go to the next one. Right, uh, the next one down here, which is number seven, timeline. When is your desired launch? It should make sense when you want to join. Okay, at the moment, you're probably going, oh, yeah, righto, um, I'd like to join right now. Yeah, and that deals with the elephant in the room. They know, okay, we can put this guy on the list that he's always good to go. I like that. But having said that, um, it's already booked out. There's no more courses the rest of the year. There's going to be people on their waiting list, et cetera. But if they say to you, when would you like to join? Realistically, at the fitness you are, okay, at the um, administrational hurdles in the other points you have, 
looking at the relationships you have, your current commitments. Do you want to go straight away? If so, let them know. I'm ready to go right now. I have no outstanding administration. If you can see a way of getting me to Kapuka as soon as possible, I am ready to follow the footsteps of the Anzacs right now. As soon as you say, ah, oh, you know, I'd like to go another six months, they're going to go, no worries, and you will slightly hear them putting that black label penthouse on the bottom of the stack. Yep. So make sure when you go in there, you know exactly when. Well, Torso told me when you were about to start training um, in support. Uh, what? What? Well, my Torso told me that when we were about to start training in support of SASR. Yeah, well, uh, I wouldn't see that as good advice. Oh, we're looking at something else. Someone did told me that on the first day of the town trying, but no. Nah. If you're going to fight in your first day, you're going to get flogged by everyone. Uh, and you're going to have a hard four years. No one's tough enough for that shit. Yeah, that's right, Jaddick. Ready to go. Black Label Penthouse, that's back in your uh, wheelhouse here, Simon Powell. So let's get out of that one. So know your timeline. And that is also important to be able to say to your family, to your friends. Okay, It's important to know in the back of your mind before you tell your boss. When am I going to go, okay, I don't need this job anymore. So plan that out. Support from family and friends, a litmus paper. Now we're seeing more and more where good people in Australia have got some soy drinking parents. You know, I don't, I don't care if your mum doesn't want you to go because that makes sense. If I was a mum, I wouldn't want my kid to go either. They want the kids to live at home forever, most of them. You know, but... Basically, if your dad doesn't want to join the military, you to join the military, there might be a good reason, but probably not. We've lost 41 people in 50 years. Give it a break. Go in there. It's going to give you adventure. It's going to give you lifestyle. It's going to give you employment. It's going to give you stability. It's going to give you discipline. It's going to teach you what you're bad at, what you're good at. It's going to give you the skills and make you better than what your family can make you, what school is ever fucking going to do, and three times better than what university can do. Huh? Do your family support you? Are they saying we don't want you to go? Or are they saying you can't do it? You can't do it because that's a different thing. That's scary. If your family and your friends are saying you can't do it, they never said oh, I couldn't do it. My dad said I'd get bashed, you know, but I was fit as buggery. So I knew I could do it physically. <coughs> Mm. Hey, Cass, did you ever hear about the incident of Kapuka? My brother, who's a cop, has told me uh, the details is pretty sad. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. When did it happen, Oscar? Uh, big bike, Foxy Fox. Uh, I read during COVID there was minimum PT during Kapuka, only uh, required PFA and swim test. Well, Big Mike, it's sad to see that the swim test is also getting pushed away, and the reason for that is they need as many people that look like they work for Apple in the military to meet the agenda of the chief of the defense force, who I believe is failing you right now. Leadership is failing. I'm not saying army. I'm saying of the defense force. You know, when you see some of the people that are allowed to join and some of the people get told no, I do not understand it. Uh, the only barriers you have at Kapuka is your, is your PFA. And the PFA is below the standard to even exist in the military, which makes it a felony that Vanilla Rice is investigating right now. Mm. Team, if you decide to support the channel, okay, everything goes towards us doing things for other people, either join Patreon or meet us in comments. Carl P, take care, Ringbone. He's off, is he? Uh, Kapuka, over uni any day. Yep, absolutely. We don't have people leaving Kapuka to go to uni, but we have plenty leaving uni to go to Kapuka. Okay, so what do your families and friends think? The next one. Okay, if you have come and you're on Patreon and you have come and you're part of the channel here and you've watched the videos and you believe in what you're hearing and you want your life to be about adventure, if you want your life to be about, this is about to get inspirational, to be about mateship, actual fucking mateship where they have your back and you have theirs. If you want it to be about immersion, 
okay, into current affairs in foreign countries, understanding that there is no one knows what's happening in the next 10 years. No one. This is about putting yourself in the mix, in the position. Well, people are like-minded like you. If you want to be in a less HR-driven world, if you want a uniform with an Australian flag, a bit of pride, a family name, something to live up to, a legacy to create, a life on the path less trodden that follows the footsteps of the Anzac, and you want to matter, if you want to be Achilles and say they won't remember your name because you're not willing to do shit, Almost everyone faces a God test as they get older where they turn around and they go, oh, I wish I'd done this earlier. Or oh, I forgot to fucking live. Well, that's what I'm telling you now. Get it out of your system before you have a family, before you have children, before you have responsibilities, before you're in a debt trap with a house. All of these things. Before I joined the military, I didn't know that I'd be hanging out of helos in foreign countries doing reconnaissance of where I was going to be doing a dismounted patrol the next day, rocking over borders at low altitude, wondering if I'm going to be in a contact tomorrow. Being in Central Africa, you know, having someone with goat eyes looking at me, like there's going to be a problem, and then just slowly using my finger to push the butt around to my rifle's put, pointing straight at him while I'm having a Coca-Cola, you know, looking at him like, what's the problem? Okay, being immersed in foreign countries in the Holy Land. I was an Egyptian citizen. You know, being through Asia, being in America, being in Pearl Harbor, going through the headland in an American warship, getting told don't sit in the captain's chair again. Going over the Suez Canal. Being the head of security over in the Middle East and having an Arab barber with a cutthroat razor shaving my neck, as I told him, on your new boss, having Colombian soldiers and having to learn Spanish, giving them hot popcorn with extra butter, mantequilla grande, yep, just so that I could give them the Coca-Cola as well and make them friends, and it worked. Foxy, mutsu cow. I'm going to buy some raw chicken with that, and I'm going to put it in my guts, and I'm going to watch what comes out of my clacker. For the Coca-Cola addiction, well done. Guys and gals, I am here for you. I am the only person that is here for you that you don't know yet. Come on over. Be part of a crowd. This is the Australian channel that can be here for you. And you can be part of the family by joining the military, follow the footsteps of the Anzacs and be the best version of you. I love it. What have you done there? Uh, Yeet the Skirt gifted uh, someone a membership and it went to Jamie Bauer. Give that man the cash. Not too cow to Foxy Fox. I love your camels and team that's not being facetious. She looks after camels. Uh, the next point, execute the mission. As we know, get in there, do it, get it done. Don't go in holding someone's hand. Go in dressed well. Go in being confident and there's no reason why you can't succeed other than the fact that DFR is dropping the goddamn ball. They're affecting our capability. Matty Forrest just put in uh, my own reserve infantry. Should I be aiming for full-time uh, fitness levels? Yes. The battlefield is going to ask you if you're good enough. Not Army Reserve, not regular Army. The battlefield, ask the K-Dog who's on the channel. You've got a bunch of military people right now, Maddie, who are current serving members. You will never be fit enough for SAS. You will never be fit enough for the Royal Australian Regiment. As a matter of fact, if you could ask that question, you know, you need to adjust your attitude as well. Because that fitness level that they ask for the BFA, okay, for the PFA, will never be enough to carry your mate out of a battlefield if he's been shot, injured. And if you can't do it, and he can't do it. What if you're the one that's shot? Work in progress. We get it done. What we're going to look at now is a couple of videos. Uh, wait two seconds. Absolutely, mate. Part-time work. Don't, uh, don't mean half the fitness. You do it for the girls. 
get fit first or, or ITs will bloody hurt. Yep, and we've got eight sections of infantry that are about to hit the ground, defensive operations. Some are there now, some leave tomorrow morning, and they will not and cannot be fit enough for what is about to be asked from. I just spoke to a whole infantry section now at the School of Infantry for advice of what's going to happen for them for the next 10 days, and they were legends. The first thing we said to them was appoint a 2IC in case the session commander is absent at any time. One of these needs to step up, and they're all in the room, and we said to them, which one of you right now, before the task starts, do you all look at as the leader of the section when the session commander is not around? Do you know what they did? Straight away, they allocated a 2IC. You know what he's going to do? He's going to allocate a 2IC for him. He's got all the hot tips, how to grease the wheels, and his section are ready to go tomorrow because now they've had a conversation with someone who actually cares about them and they're good to go. But life is going to suck. Tomorrow, when you go to sleep, they will not be going to bed. When you wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and do a piss, they're still going to be digging. When you get up at 10 o'clock in the morning, they're still going to be digging. Yep. Wait a sec. Patreon member. Um, mm, mm. Oh, shit. So the army recruit is fighting for his life after a suicide attempt at the military range. That's not the first time that's happened. But um, oh, I've had a soldier. It was in my very first section as an instructor at the School of Infantry that took his own life. And he was an amazing young kid. Yeah. Jeremy Williams, his name was, lest we forget. While we're doing that, boom, let's put a candle on for the fallen. Candle in the wind. Okay. We care about your team. Ah, you fallen as well. Right, like Oscar, casual text you there, uh, Dougie. I set multiple OSBs around three months ago. They seem to have criteria, but I have actually seen the paperwork. They fill out to know exactly what it is. Okay. Lest we forget. Absolutely. Uh, Carl, you need to be way fitter than a BFA. Join a boxing gym. Excellent fitness there. Do some HIIT training and a few days uh, of I call cardio weights. Become an absolute beast. Absolutely. Can't go wrong. Thanks for your advice, uh, boys. Um, Maddie, you've got an awesome name. Let's see that you be the best version of you. I love it. Hit the like button, team. I don't think it makes any difference. Um, this country is worth defending. It is. We are in a land that is girt by sea that looks like America but is not like America, although there are coalition brothers and sisters. You know, it looks like but is not the UK. Looks like, but is not New Zealand. Our isolation is our best friend. But at the same time, we need the right people to step up. This is about you having a life. It's not about just deploying. This is about doing fitness in your work hours. This is about you when you do train. There is an accumulative outcome rather than just looking good at a club paying $20 for a beer. If you're going to be getting the tattoos, and you're going to be training twice a day at the gym, then do something that will actually test that fitness. And there is nothing greater when it comes to CrossFit, okay, which is, um, what do I call it, a, a test of uh, functional movement. I can't remember what it is, what gump it is, but it's real. You know, It's going to be cardio. It's going to be second half footy fitness all the time. Mateship, adventure. You're going to have opportunities. Sometimes I shit myself when I look at my career and think what I would have missed out on all of those things if I hadn't joined the military. Now, being in an RSL, wondering why at 7 o'clock we're going to stand up the less we forget. Well, I know now. And my life has been an absolute blessing. And if I was to die tomorrow, the only regret what I'd have is that I had less memories for my daughter. That is it. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you, Australia. And thank you to my dad for being such a positive role model. 
Yeah. Uh, agree with the CrossFit advice. I go to CrossFit gym and it's amazing in all aspects. It is, but functional movement and fitness, I don't believe in training for the sake of training. I believe in training to compete. And there is no greater competition than man versus man. Sports is about the replication of warfare, whether it be netball, whether it be baseball, whether it be football, whether it be contact or non-contact. It is still between people on sides that represent tribes. And people have lost sight of that. CrossFit is not good for your body. It's not. But doing nothing is worse. Brazilian jiu-jitsu for Thursday sports makes you fit as hell. Yes. But you do have to be careful, Foxy. The longer you do it for, you can end up with your, your body being stretched out in ways that become some real problems when you get a little bit older. I play golf to maintain. I can't understand golf. And what I can't understand the most about golf, I'm a good th club thrower, is why there needs to be 18 holes instead of just nine. Let's have a, a look at a couple of videos here, team. I'm going to put my headphones on. And that's a cosmetic thing for the ladies that watch too. You know, can we get uh, some realistic comments about this uh, lesbian haircut I've got? Let's see what your humour is because the army's all about humour too. Let's have a look at some of these videos, some of the propaganda. Um, okay, let's have a look at this one for a sec. Now it goes for a minute and a bit. Last roping. Yep. Okay, team, just remember one thing too. When you go to be in the commandos, you have to have gone to infantry first. So that's another reason why you want to go to infantry. So you can be able to then follow, okay, uh, your trajectory in the special forces if that's what you intend on doing. Okay, sorry, mate. I'll get back to it, team. <laughs> Okay, so I love that because it lets you know, do you have what it takes? So it gives you the, am I going to be willing to have a go at something? It gives you a distant point always to aim for. I like that. Big Mike, Kaz, I think the haircut would be better uh, if it was blending in better at the top. Sides so uh, looks a bit disconnect. Also, if you grow out the top a bit more, push it to the side, uh, it'll cover the hairline. Yeah, I like that. I like that, and I agree. Smash the like button, Kaz, you look 10 years younger. No, I reckon I look 10 years older, mate. You've got a face like a half-sucked mango at the moment. Let's have a look at another quick video. Let's look at one of the more propaganda ones. Kapuka preparation. Goes for a minute and 49 seconds. You might be doubting yourself at the start, but once you get here and you get into the swing of things, it becomes a lot easier, especially with your teammates around you. You will get taught everything here as long as you are ready to give you 100%. Things that you bring to Kapuka, uh, positive attitude, determination, motivation. I would bring definitely photos of you. It looks like a lot of people that need to go to remedial PT. You're really making it hard for the PDIs. 
almost everyone there looked like a top knot moon faced bloody Mongol warrior. Family and friends, it will keep the morale up and will keep you motivated. I would also bring a good suit and a good set of civilian clothing. You're also going to need uh, sports bras, toiletries, your basics, a button up shirt. Uh, you should also bring, I would recommend, wooden coat hangers. You need some sturdy coat hangers to hold your... I don't understand that. Everyone's equipment is meant to be standardised. You're all meant to have exactly the same coat hangers, exactly the same locker layout. You shouldn't have to turn up with your own goddamn coat hangers. We used to get a brown bag with everything that was standardised. Your Pearson's starch, your crisp starch, your... Uh, uh, what do you call it, your coat hangers, etc. So there's absolutely no deviation between anyone that's in that group. So I don't know what's happening there. Cams up. You get all your DPCU uniforms, which is your camouflage attire. You get PT attire, which is your bike shorts, pants and shirts. Your combat boots, which are essential. Before attending a Kapuka, the basic fitness level, if you can be at that baseline, it will make life so much easier and that way you'll have no hiccups along the road. There you go. Said by the PDI. Well done, mate. It helps to have as much confidence in the water as you can. The basic ability to swim. In order to best prepare for the training requirements at Kapuka, it's best to have a good level of aerobic endurance and a good level of muscular strength. If you push yourself that little bit harder, then you're going to be... Why have people got sunglasses on while doing bayonet fighting? What the hell is going on? Kapuka? Fine when you get here. All right. Love that Johnny Howard trackie. <laughs> Amazing how many grown adults couldn't swim. It's disgusting to tell you the truth. Um, because... Josiah, nice to have you here, mate. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe to him. No one's going to ask you when you suddenly get to Townsville and you get told you're about to go to the uh, helicopter underwater escape training, which is a requirement of everyone in three brigade, especially before you go on operations. Or what happens when you find out you're going for a month to Hawaii for Gold Eagle at Kenioe Bay doing a ship to shore it's a bit late to fucking say, oh, by the way, not only can't I swim, but I'm scared of water. Are you British? You don't like to shower? What are you talking about? Throw them in, learn fast. Good on you, Scotty. Oscar Manning, Ben, well done. Thank you very much, mate. What, Maz? Hey, Kaz, I'm 30 years old, mate. Still at home with mum. What? Okay, there's probably a reason. I've been training for infantry for about two months. Uh, could be going hard on the training, but plan to apply in January. Okay. What I want you to do, because you're saving rent by being home with mum, unless you're paying for it, White Maz, I want to see you get on the bat phone straight up. You and I are going to have a conversation in the next two days, and we are going to prepare you for everything you need to be able to hit. You won't get there in January, but let's look for somewhere between March and May, you know, for you. Get on there. And I look forward to helping you. Hugh Duncan, great name. Heard whispers of the swim test changing in Townsville. Um, no worries there, White Maz. And guess what? When you do, we paint a Roman miniature and you'll be part of the Black Legion, which is not a racial slur as well. I'll jump off there. Uh, I'll get rid of that. Uh, team, I'm not trying to force Patreon down your throat, but I cannot help you more than what I can on... Uh, on Patreon, one on one. What is your felony that I can help you with? Consider me your lawyer, and I'm trying to keep you out of jail. Daz, Jennifer G, don't mean to have their hair. Are women allowed to have long hair? Yes, double standards are allowed. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Good, it's a good question, actually. Preconditioning program shouldn't happen. Army swim test, forget it. Uh, what else we got? Kapuka after Kapuka. Hey, that might be a good one. Two minutes. Training after Kapuka. Here we Finishing go. Kapuka and marching out is an amazing feeling. Yep. 
I'm able to show my family what I've done and accomplished over the 80 days, and I've never been so proud of. So every one of these people now have their name on their chest. You are carrying your family name. No quitting. If you quit, you're quitting your family. That's what you're doing. You're representing them as the tip of the iceberg while they are under the water, you know, that destroys the Titanic. Always have in the back of your mind, how will they look at you if you don't finish what you start? Myself and my fellow teammates. Marching out is the end state. It's a ceremonial parade that you'll conduct where friends and family are allowed to come and watch you and celebrate you becoming an Australian soldier. Excellent. After Kapuka, I'm looking forward to starting my initial employment training. On completion of your basic training. Not if you go to school of infantry, son. We're going to cut your hair again, and then we're going to give you calluses that never go away for life until they're replaced with arthritis. Training here at Kapuka, you'll move to the school where they conduct that training for the job that you have selected. Okay, stop being tough, Kaz. This is where I shit myself. Heights is my big fear. That is my kryptonite. Initial employment training is the next phase of training that follows recruit training where soldiers begin to learn the basic requirements for performing their specific job they enlisted into. Yep. At the end of your 80 days, you're a soldier in the Australian Army. All your family and friends are there at your march out parade and it's just the greatest sense of pride you'll ever feel. It's the most satisfying thing I have done in my Army career. What you have achieved, you've made a civilian into a soldier. It's one of the only times in your entire life of a military member where you get to actually have your family there and share that pride. It is a beautiful thing to, um, to watch. And that's not tongue in cheek. I mean it. I can get tears in my eyes even now when I watch a family look in the eyes of their young man, their daughter, and see what they've accomplished. It is a truly beautiful thing. So I'm announcing right now. Now, I'll say it on another thing, but Let's just say I'm going to a march out somewhere in the next two weeks because my legs are starting to work again. On a personal level, throughout their time and training, recruits can expect to see development in their overall sense of self-discipline, responsibility, organisational capacity, the ability to conduct tasks independently. Despite the challenges of Kapuka, you gain a lot more confidence, a lot more discipline, more organisational skills. Yep. The biggest improvement I've seen in myself, probably self-discipline and personal organisation. I feel like I'm definitely a better, well-rounded person coming out of here. Kapuka is a rewarding experience. The most beautiful thing of all of this team, I'll let you go in a second, is the fact that none of this is done by yourself you're sharing this moment you're sharing these friendships you're sharing everything you know, it is a beautiful thing and you will forge friendships and you will continue to make these friendships as you go and it is a beautiful thing it really is and it's something that's missing from a lot of civilian sectors which is all about chasing the dollar chasing the bag where there is no end so please team do this as an investment in you as a human, not as a soldier. That is a byproduct of success, legacy, and a scholarship of being the best version of yourself. Vortex for the cause, fitness, and service in the American way. Nutsu Cow, thank you very much for the yellow banner, which could represent the Indian curse that gave me all the medical dramas I've got at the moment. Yeah, thanks, team. Thank you very much. Can we get some thumbs up for the Vortex? Uh, Foxy, I have my nails done. Acrylic, not as long and pink. Uh, never had an issue. Yep. One hour, two minutes. Thank you. Simon, when can you get down here so we can go and I'll take you to an American hot dog place too? Uh, Desire, would have been nice to march out instead of just a pizza and a bus ticket. What happened there, mate? Dave Keys, I got a number two a week before and I still had to pay for one when I got out of there. We get uniform allowance for that too. But um, I've lost some slouch hats. It's the worst thing when you lose a slouch hat. It sucks.
Vortex. We'll get out of here in five minutes soon. Now, questions. Let us know. Do you have any questions on what we're talking about these steps? Let's quickly go over them again. Okay, the first one. Bam. Join Patreon today for Express One-on-One -on -one Coaching. Bam. Research the roles, the why you want to join so you don't get taken, you know, on the back foot. We'll talk about OSB another day. Have three choices, diversity of choices, but have a look online to make sure that you're not sinking your own ship by putting something in there you're not actually wanting to do. Clean up your hurdles. Again, I can help you with those. Bam. Admin, outstanding commitments. Can you go now? Make it known. Fitness, it's always in progress. Keep working on it. Be the best you can be. Do not tie it to a metric, which is a PFA or a BFA. Turn up like, am I going to be able to carry a mate out of battle? That. Okay, timeline. When is your desired launch date? Let them know. Now is a great time. Do you have the support? from your friends, from your family. If you say no, they're going to look at you funny. So just when in doubt, say yes. And if no one supports you, this guy will. Execute the mission. Do something about it. Don't wait till someone else is with you to go, let's join together. And the last one, again, the reiteration. You're not alone. Jump on Patreon. Bam. Have the one-on-one -on -one call. We'll have a laugh, dark humour, and find out who you are, what makes you tick. You know, and from there, I'll be your battle buddy. Okay, Dave Casey, I've got my money back over 30 years. Yeah, there you go. Can you buy a spare slouchy hat anytime you want? You can even buy them from the um, <coughs> from the, the Canberra War Memorial if you want to be an imposter. Big Mike, Kaz, would it be all right to come to Kapuka with a number one buzz or bald? Either way, Big Mike, they're going to make you cut your hair again. Don't turn up bald unless you are bald or I'll think that you've got a uh, a problem uh, with uh, potentially with sunburn and all that sort of shit. Uh, peppers, actually, so I have a spare. Um, Hugh Duncan, just remember, O's have hairstyles, not haircuts. There we go. Foxy Dave, it's fine, Big Mike, but you'll uh, still pay for your haircut. Yep. You'll get two uh, slouches, one stand, one ceremony. Yep. And that'll be all right. Okay, guys. So in conclusion, thank you for tonight. Understand that. One sec. Okay. Understand that the military, I still believe, today is the best possible job that you can almost have. Because I don't know another job. Ask someone else what's a better job, and they're going to straight away go blah, 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 based on the pay. Okay? If you were to ask me what is better than the Army, then I might think, okay, maybe a coffee van. Okay, maybe doing silver taxis in Sydney where you get to speak to people four or five days, uh, four or five times a day in a limousine service. That would be great. You know, but people don't do a dive instructor's job for long. You know, you don't want to be a lawyer. Okay? You don't want to be in a laptop on a fucking train, you know, at 6 o'clock in the morning and 7 o'clock at night. Guys and gals, do something that has a chance of immersing you in history, modern history, mateship, adventure, friendships, relationships, finance, you know, train in work time, not after hours, medical. It's a 24-hour, all-encompassing culture, and you're going to goddamn love it. And you know what? There's not too many people that do better than Australians. I'll tell you that right now. We're the best small army in the world. And with that, we're going to get out of here. Vinny, good stream, Kaz. Take care, mate. Thank you, team. It's okay, Scotty. Who's got a son in the military? Well done, sir. Foxy, I love uh, army. It, uh, it has its good and its bad. It's the best thing I've ever done. And guess what? No one ever knows how much they love the army until the day they leave. And the day you leave, you end up with tears in your eyes. 24 years, I still get tears now. And that should be an indictment on the choices I've made in life that I carry with me now that make me the best version of what I can be. And I'll always be the platoon sergeant. I'll always be here for you 
to give you advice that other people are either spineless to give or don't understand what it's like to be part of the game, the run on field. I've been that guy. I love it. I want you to love it. It doesn't come without its scratches. It doesn't come without its scars. But it comes with brotherhood, comes with mates, and it comes with adventures, and it comes with invisible everything that no one will understand. But with that out the way, this Thursday or Friday, get your ass to the movies, grab the largest popcorn you can, and try to finish it out of respect to Colombians while you watch Napoleon. Because I tell you what, that movie is going to be a game changer. With that, the happy lesbian is getting out of here. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for your commitment to the channel that is here for you. Subscribe to the channel right now. And mucho respecto. Peace to your mother. See you later. Woo! It's always good when you actually get out of here. You know, it's more tiring to do this ad lib conversation as you'd imagine. Hello to all those around the world. Goodbye. And to all the beautiful women that would say no to me, no disrespect, no hard feelings. <laughs>